The time is coming swiftly. The middle rounds are no place for the unskilled. Yet here you are, unprepared, you fools. This season you will find all kinds of foes, eager to watch your draft crumble with wasted picks. There can only be one ultimate draft kit. Only one that can bend them to its will. And it does not share power. You must wield the UDK and send your opponents back to the shadows. You shall not pass on this chance to send your league mates into the deep. Fly, you fools, to ultimatedraftkit.com. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Uh, welcome in. Wednesday, August 7th. Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, back with you, the fantasy footballers. Here we are, gentlemen. Once again. Once again. Uh, we've got the top 10 wide receiver rankings on today's show. We got some hungry for more and ever breaking news to talk about on today's episode of the show, getting you ready to. Dominate your league in 2024. Every advantage possible to uh, to take out your league mates. And I'm excited. Jason, how are you today? Uh, I am wonderful. I'm excited for this show. I'm excited to talk about some of the specific players. And it's it's just a good time of year. And I'm I'm really getting excited for it's football time. Like I oh. I've got I've got a shirt hanging in my closet put to the side for the uh, for the day for the day for the it's football time day what day is that is that is it tomorrow <laughs> i i don't think there's yeah it, is it tomorrow yeah, yeah. Season the first tomorrow. Season is tomorrow okay because i know there's games saturday there's games sunday do we get a game I tomorrow mean, mike confirm mike please confirm i'll look oh, it up man. i'm pretty sure oh man um yeah tomorrow yeah. I'm, I'm, my hands are shaking we got lions giants and panthers patriots tomorrow let's go baby we also uh yeah, just want to invite you along for the entire season. Click that follow button, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, the subscribe button over on YouTube. Click that bell. We do Sunday Live every single uh, Sunday morning. You get to witness uh, normally Mike, but sometimes it's uh, Jason or myself just tilting. Oh, yeah. As we make start sit decisions and help, and help you uh, out. And the start sit tools on the website all season long as well to to give you some guidance and pretty much just remove your own accountability. We want you to <laughs> we want to give you some outs, right? If the week goes wrong, we are your shield. Yeah. We are shame your shield. We are meat shield. Sh yeah, no, shame shield. That's <laughs> yeah. that's a good one. So, uh the tools all season long, you can uh, become a part of the community at jointhefoot.com. The ultimate draft kits available right now at ultimatedraftkit.com if you want to step up your game. All right. Well, there's one. Are we moving on real quick? I, we don't have to. I just, we, look. This is your show. Sometimes you have to wield the power. Okay. And the influence. I mean, look, absolute dominance of the football space. We we have huge influence here, especially okay. like over teams, uh, over media productions out there. Interesting. And... I don't know if you guys saw my tweet because it was a it was fired off late last night. Tuned into episode one of Hard Knocks, Chicago Bears. Oh, it started. Oh yeah, yeah it it started and the the episode was okay. But here's the, here's the problem, Jason. You will your skin's gonna rip no, off your body. No, 
No, they did not. There, well, no, they didn't change the music. Okay, the horns are there. They didn't change it, but there's this huge narration going on the entire time to the point of it got to the end of the intro, and I'm like, wait, what? Did they have the music on? What? Like, it, 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 it is an absolute travesty. Oh, Still. so you're stepping up and stepping yeah. out. Max, HBO, whoever is in charge of this, get that crap off of there. Get it out. Let that epic theme play untainted. I need it. I, that goes right in my That's veins. That's why I watch. It gets me pumped up for, for so football. You, were, you like, were just shocked. I do. I, I was really, really upset. Did it Did it change your uh, yeah. enjoy, enjoyment of the rest of the yeah, show? Yeah, absolutely. I was. I, was like, I imagine he turned it off. <laughs> what i would have done i watched it for like i'll give him i'm gonna give you a little bit of credit here but yeah i went in the udk bears have plummeted in my rankings <laughs> oh all because of yeah. the uh the yeah yes yeah, it's, it's not their fault wow mm. so knock it off <laughs> thank you mike <laughs> the narrator go bye-bye <laughs> all right here we go welcome to hungry for more presented by uber eats All right, we are into Hungry for More. We're each picking out players that are making some headlines. Mike, maybe you hit that hype train over there for these guys because – I don't know where anything is, man. The, the off season is – You see how many buttons there are? Yeah, yeah. You're, Mike's in my seat today. I'm in Mike's seat today. And yeah. um, there's the hype train. He found it. Yeah, don't I'll, – I'll hit what I can, but don't ask me for anything. I am so very hungry for yeah. more – Malik, neighbors. I get it. Um, it feels, it, it feels like you're supposed to. At least I feel the pressure to to come and just like give you 35 data points as to uh, why I am hungry for more Malik neighbors. But it, it's fundamentally, um, he's too good at football to be stopped, and we are seeing the evidence present itself already in camp. Uh, my favorite quote is not from somebody associated with the Giants, but rather head coach Dan Campbell of the uh, Lions, who said he is a mix of Chase and Jefferson, but has the mentality of OBJ. I would be shocked if he didn't oh, win Offensive Rookie of the Year. Whew, that's some fire. Uh, so Guns Mahoney uh, breaking out both guns with that quote that's a reverse jinx happening i could smell that a mile he away he caught 17 of 18 targets in joint practices from daniel jones uh was quoted as borderline unstoppable i have been i am a monster malik neighbors fan and the question you know when you say hungry for more i i mean i'm not really going to qualify it by his adp because i'm just hungry to see more malik neighbors play football but you know Two years ago, we had a surprise season from the Giants. I do trust in Brian Dable. I don't trust Daniel Jones. But I also, like, what they had last year in place of Daniel Jones wasn't a solution. So, and and with Brian Dable and Daniel Jones the year prior, you know, you have big plays from <laughs> Darius Slayton. And uh, who was... <laughs> I'm trying to remember the name, Kyle. You might remember it. Who is the breakout? Isaiah Hodgins, right? Oh, yeah. So we've had some like fantasy relevance in New York. You, is, yeah, you've had flashes. Malik Neighbors is is outrageously good at football, and um, you know there were people at the draft that liked him more than Marvin Harrison. Like this is the level of talent, and just because two are drafted in the same year doesn't mean you ignore the second guy off the board. So I'm hungry for more. I want to see the draft price. Oh, you know, it's not going. The ADP is not going down, you know, but it's pretty high already. Right now, it's um, is it wide receiver twenty four? Yeah, yeah, it ranges. From, That's fine. From platform to platform, he's uh, got he's got a pretty wide range, twenty to thirty. If I am twenty or beyond, pick twenty and beyond, he is an auto draft for me. Okay, I mean, it, I have, I, I'm having a really hard time putting all the puzzle pieces together for Malik neighbors, because I agree. I was one of those people I'm up there of Malik uh, that neighbors and Marvin Harrison jr. Are both truly elite difference making players. That ADP is, it's just, it is, there is so much risk for it to me because it's, 
yeah, he's the wide receiver 24, but it's in the fourth round. And looking at Daniel Jones, this is where it's like it's hard to put the pieces together. Yeah, we had a surprise year from the New York Giants two years ago when the team was much better than they we thought they could be, and that was uh, 3,200 passing yards and 15 passing touchdowns from Daniel Jones. Chicken or egg, of course. He, he hasn't had a player like Malik Neighbors, but we have 3,000 passing yards, 2,900, 2,400 injury-shortened season, 3,200. It's just it's so hard to get there. When you with look Daniel at, Jones, look at where if he if he goes where he's going now, you're talking about Zay Flowers versus Malik Neighbors. You're talking about you got Tank Dell. You got Tank, right next. Yeah, to him. you got Tank Dell right there too. And, and that's an easy Neighbors for you. Yeah, that that one is hard because yeah, I one, love Tank that, Dell. I know, but I, I, I but like, I am on, on Neighbors as well. He's, I like I like Tank Dell. It's just Neighbors is clear path, right? Like the the runway's been cleared. There there is no competition. There is this is this is your this is your team. Yeah. And the team, you know, they moved on from Saquon, and the, the identity is Malik Neighbors. So um, where, that's my hungry for more today. But yeah. I, so where do you think Daniel Jones can get in total passing yards? And then where can Malik Neighbors get? Because I'm the like the example of like let's Malik say Neighbors he, can catch. Uh, let's say he gets to 3,500 yards or whatever, and then does Neighbors get up over what 1,200 yards? Yeah, he does can get he to get, 13, 1,400 yards. Uh, like yeah, that's possible. That amount of the yardage to one guy is just oh man it's hard to reconcile for me yes the percentage uh would be i have daniel jones plotted for 3500 yards right now okay 3545 um but again it's not necessarily how we're going to project the probability of the season to go it's the fact that there is a there is a ceiling for neighbors that yes in my opinion does not exist for even Tank Dell or what about or D Zay Flowers or Amari Cooper, like DK Metcalf, Cooper Cup, both going after Malik Neighbors right now. Uh, team structure. Uh, yeah, that depends on the platform. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm looking at sleepers ADP right now. It's, All right. It's, it's, it's it, tough. It, it, it's it tough. is. It is tough. You have to. You have to call your shot, and that's what you're doing, Andy. You, you're saying, I'm taking the talent. I'm taking the explosive athlete, and, uh, you know. You're just gonna you're gonna light the dynamite and hope that. It yeah, works. I, I I just <laughs> this is just um, boom goes the dynamite. An incredible, incredible player that I have a lot of faith in. So, um, Mike, you're hungry for more. I am, and this is a player who's not been talked about a ton on this show because he was uh, sent to Siberia, the the fantasy Siberia of this year. Well, really last year too, but the Carolina Panthers, they picked up Deontay Johnson, and he is going at, on sleeper right now as the wide receiver 42, and that is our consensus is at 35, so he looks like a draft value for our projections. And it's because he went to Carolina, it was kind of like this. You put up the, the mental gate of I'm not going to allow myself to even think about the opportunities for it. And as you look, okay, those immediate emotional reactions are now gone. Let's let's look at this with action, not emotion. Let's look at it with, you know, with facts and everything. And it's with Deontay Johnson. Number one is a very good wide receiver. He is always open. There's an uh, there's an ESPN open score. 109 wide receivers graded in it. And Deontay Johnson was was 11th last year because he just he is that kind of a wide receiver. Bryce Young, at least in the beginning of the season, he hyper focused on Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen fell off. I didn't watch every single snap of him. I'm assuming that is related what? to. <laughs> what? Like, thank did you. I couldn't interrupt myself. Did you, did you say my name? I yes, I did. Oh. Adam, you may go back to rest. I, I go and take a nap. So he uh, I, I, he fell off. Look, he's older. That's not an uncommon thing to happen to to the elder veterans for uh, in the NFL season. But Deontay Johnson, he has Dave Canales now, and. What happened last year for the ex-wide receiver for Dave Canales, uh, Mike Evans had himself a fantastic year, got a ton of production up there in Seattle as well. So it's just leave like is is there a world where Deontay Johnson finishes as a top twenty-four wide receiver? And I think we need to be more open to that, just because of of target volume and. And the fact that he is a good good wide receiver, a proven wide receiver, 
while his ceiling isn't elite, it it doesn't really matter. Like you're going to get a player who can help you each and every week. Now, just to make sure I'm hearing this correctly, the problem with Malik Neighbors and his awesome talent is Daniel Jones is ADP. But the solution. No, I heard some Daniel Jones in there. But yeah, but, um, did, but, you, did you hear but the then part Bryce where Bryce Young is the is n not an issue? Did you hear wide receiver forty two? No, I heard you say that he could finish as a top twenty four wide yeah, receiver. He could. He couldn't. You could. <laughs> I agree. He couldn't. I agree. I agree with, with yourself. you. I agree with myself that he couldn't finish as a top twenty four <laughs> wide receiver. Uh, it's now a more crowded room, and uh, it's not a crowded room. It's a, who's who's crowding him? Well, I what? My hungry for more. <laughs> you woke me up. My hunger for more last week was league at, and it's unfortunate, man. Yeah, like that's part of the crowding was was him. And haven't you heard how great Mingo's been? I <laughs> I have okay. second round pick of last year, Jonathan Mingo, has been making waves in camp. We'll see. All right, well, let's talk about a first-round pick from last year who is viewed as an overwhelming bust, and that is JSN. Is that the view? I, I, I think last year was a, a strong massive word. disappointment. He, he's going after Deontay Johnson on Sleeper right now. That's This is ridiculous. Is it, though? Yes, and here's why. Um, JSN is a very, so very, this is your very— hungry for more. This JSN. is my hungry for more. Uh, JSN hoping for more, hoping for some. <laughs> well, I'm hungry, famous. I'm hungry, starving. Hungry for something. We didn't. We didn't get a whole lot. I I I could see that. In fact, here here's an example of how perished from hunger. How starving everyone is. Okay, he is the only first round wide receiver over the last decade who had 50 receptions as a rookie. Oh no, he did not. That's a lie. <laughs> On 93 targets, and is drafted outside the top 36 in his sophomore year. It doesn't happen often because one of the kind of cheat codes in fantasy is second-year wide receivers. They take a leap forward, and if they were decent as a rookie, then you know that they have the ability and the chance to take a leap forward. JSN, you know, it was like th this time last year we were talking about JSN the way we're talking about Malik Neighbors, uh, how talented he was. Now, Malik Neighbors went to a team with Jack Squat. Uh, you know, he's the one. He's the alpha. That wasn't the situation for JSN. He went to a team that had DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. And yeah, they're still there, oh, but yeah, he, the, the guys he was a there. rookie. That was his first chance. And then he broke his arm. Remember, it's like we we forget how it happened. His usage last year was so bad, it's like cynically awful. I mean, he had twenty nine total receptions behind the line of scrimmage. That's the most among rookies. Only Rondale Moore in twenty twenty one had more in the PFF era. Uh, his usage was dumb. And here's, if you think about his usage, this is like, it's not his fault, right? He's not he's not choosing to stay behind the line of scrimmage for that <laughs> pass. Like, he's not. Go deep, Jason. Nah. Not this time. Look, I'm, I'm not, open five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Not this time. Here was JSN's comment. I know you guys know this, but as a reminder from the Super Bowl week when uh, a Bears reporter was asking JSN about their new offensive coordinator. This is him talking to the to the local people trying to hype up the hey, what what should we expect from uh, Shane Waldron coming to Chicago? And his answer was, and this is a quote, um uh this is live. Uh good luck to y'all. I mean, uh he's a great person. To I mean get bodied. This was his utilization was so bad. JSN on Ryan oh, Grubb's man. new offense coming in from the University of Washington. Quote, when I see the playbook, my eyes get wide. He is excited. Head coach, Real Mike, big pages. head coach Mike McDaniel, this was like yesterday. He was just talking about he's got this fluid explosiveness about him. He can run the entire route tree. Incredible ways to track the ball. Body control. Explosive in and out of his cuts. The mentality of what we want, he has that. JSN that? Is, a, is a really good wide receiver. No one... Like I, that's the thing that we're forgetting is he's a really good wide receiver going into year two. Yes, he's still in a crowded wide receiver room, but he is not being drafted what his it's, talent and outcome could be. Can you say the coach's name again real quick? Mike McDonald. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> JSN averaged 36 yards a game last year, which puts the, the – you expected, even if the play calls are bad, to see more things that made you – 
excited. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. For sure. I this is why I, I'm hungry for more. We're all hungry more. for more. Yeah, JSN has the potential um, to step up, but the dependence, like you like DK Metcalf, Lockett is still there. Like I'm not hungry for more Puka. You know, he's right. No, you're full. He fed me. Yeah, for, that was a great rookie season. <laughs> I'm fed. I'm me. stuffed. I, I, I we had both a, ate. I had dinner butter. <laughs> yeah, like, my oh, belly yeah. is full. JSN, really, really hungry for more. All right. So Deontay, Mike. Yeah. JSN, I've got my league neighbors. Um, mine will be the most delicious meal if it works out. Yes, if all three hit their ceiling, yeah. I, I agree. Neighbors, yours, yours would be a gourmet meal. Mine's like a mine's a no. Yours is sustenance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mine that's is, what Thielen was last year, by the way. Like he was sustenance sure. for the first half of the year. Yeah, mine would be a super affordable. Like this is just a value meal. I mean, I'm I'm sit, getting, th sit down or drive through. This this is sit down. Okay. It's just a great deal. All right, that was I came on a Tuesday. You know, I oh, was a Tuesday deal. Yeah, it was like happy hour on Tuesday. <laughs> Just so cheap. All right. That was hungry for more presented by Uber Eats. Get game day deals all season long only on Uber Eats. Official on demand food delivery partner of the NFL order. Now let's take a quick break and then we'll jump into we'll jump into the news, man. and notes from around the league presented by USAA insurance all right I mean we could talk a lot of 49ers I guess because we got the Brandon <laughs> Ayuk stuff to talk about wait a minute hold on did I say Mike McDaniel I'm that's why I had you say it again because I see I, in Slack Kyle thinks I said Mike McDaniel I wasn't a hundred percent sure <laughs> these guys names in my brain I cannot I cannot McDonald, keep McDonald, McDaniel, McDonald, McDaniels. McDaniel, McDaniel's, Michael. I just like just call him Coach Mike. <laughs> I'm just gonna call him Coach of the Dolphins, Coach of the Seahawks. That's my new nickname for these guys. I will never say their names again because my brain don't work that way. <laughs> Michael uh, Matthew McDaniel. Remember when you played that Donald? Remember when you played that like cool sound clip from Old McDonald? <laughs> yes, yes. I just started calling. Uh, I just started calling him McDonald's on the Dynasty podcast mm. today because it was easier. Oh, McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, there it goes with the value meal. It, well, yeah, but no, McDonald's. You would think that would be uh, the head coach of the Seahawks, but I, that's how I was referring to the head coach of the Dolphins. I see. Right. Oh, Very I'm helpful. seeing a pro. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> All right. Christian McCaffrey is going to miss the preseason with a calf strain. It was a preemptive oh, no from Mike. <laughs> Ugh. This is um, eee. this is really scary. I I definitely moved his risk rating up in the in the UDK. Um, it it's to it, like, <laughs> are you taking him number one? I don't th I don't think I am. I am. Okay, I like it. I to I am. to me, Tyree Kill is so valuable. Like I don't I don't lose anything there. I don't have any risk. Um. If I know this guy is dealing with a calf injury, I mean, we we saw Joe Burrow last year get shut down for a couple of weeks around this same time with a calf injury. He's come come back and you know I mean, he's still at one for me right now. Um, risk rating going up and you know trying not to you know overreact, but I don't mind the. F I think the fear because of McCaffrey's injuries in the past are reasonable. Yeah, and, and and I'm not dropping him in my rankings. Like, um, you know, he's in the same tier. He's my number one running back. It's just that choice at the top. It's just the choice of I think Tyree Kill okay, is so just as valuable. Yeah, he, yeah, I would take him one hundred two. Right. Well, I'm, not, I'm not off of McCaffrey. You know the uh, the the backfield: Mitchell strained hamstring, Isaac Isaac Garindo, uh missing time with a hamstring injury. They had to sign Matt Breida to come in and. Uh, Breed a 2.0 there in San Francisco. And then Jordan Mason. Ponches. I mean, what? Ponches. Yeah, yeah, we discovered this. On, That's the nickname? They no, call no. him. That's Jay his middle name. Yeah, he, he goes Ponches? by. Ponches? Ponches. Yeah. yeah he's Not throwing, haunches. He, he's out there throwing ponches, man. Wow. Uh, His nickname is JP. And I'm like, well, how is his nickname JP when his name is Jordan Mason? Mm -hmm. Where's the P coming from? Mm -hmm. Ponches. Wow. Yeah. Um. Well, he's the only man left with a punch he was right he, now he was really really good uh last year on a per touch basis a lot of the beat reporters were always 
talking about like why why is he not getting run over Elijah Mitchell? And now this offseason, you you've seen Shanahan talk up about the trust that he has in Jordan Mason. The running backs coach has been talking about how he's coming into the the meeting rooms as a different man. And and so Jordan Mason has has made Elijah Mitchell to me at the very least not a locked in handcuff. Uh Puka Nakua update. Should be go, good to go for week one, according to McVeigh. Had a Bursa sack. Had, quote, little bit of a Bursa sack. <laughs> um, he kind of burst it, McVeigh a, said. a Joey Bursa sack? Uh, he said he's going to be <laughs> or weak. Or Nick Bursa sack. I, I'm unsure. Oh, um, my gosh. Swish! <laughs> your jokes yeah. sound just as dumb from this side of the table. <laughs> uh, week to week, nothing serious, nothing structural. Should be ready to go for Detroit, according to McVeigh. That's good news. Um, that is the fluid-filled sac under tendons at joints that help reduce the strain on the muscle. Thanks, According doctor. to Matthew Betts. Uh, Josh Downs had to be helped off the field after a great camp. He is uh, not putting yeah. weight on his lower leg, waiting for a report there. Um, Downs was outperforming Adonai Mitchell and, and looked. He was the the wide receiver, too, in terms of fantasy value for the Colts. And then Rondale Moore this morning, breaking news. Air oh, cast. don't use that word. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Air cast on his right leg. Randall Moore, wide receiver for the Falcons, taking to a Baptist Health medical facility. Practice was called after the injury. Yeah, that's this not great. This looks uh, maybe season ending for Rondell Moore. And so the, the 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 news here was there was already a uh, camp battle going on between Rondell Moore and Ray Ray McLeod for uh, to be the slot wide receiver. Ray, Ray like in your dynasty leagues. On it, like he could be a nasty boy. We're talking about Ray Ray McLeod that you could just throw onto the end of the bench and and see what happens. Don't expect anything from him, but look, if Kirk Cousins in this offense gets rolling, who knows? It, it does. You know, Darnell Mooney is a, a name to just like, rem just to remember. That name has just not not only on this show, like where we haven't even talked about him anywhere. It, like, have you guys seen a single peep? About no, Darnell I Mooney? have not seen one beat reporter we'll talking about him. anything. I, I I haven't heard any news, but bad or good, really on on Mooney personally. But I know he is a good enough wide receiver to be like a, a wide receiver two in an offense that now really really needs him. Kyle's there in Atlanta. So Kyle, have you? What's the the Mooney report? We'll, we'll go to Kyle for drafted, the most drafted player in best ball. He is your most drafted player in best ball. Yeah, that says nothing about him though. <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks kyle from the boots on the ground in atlanta uh all right uh and then we and, need but, to... but wait back to the question have you heard anything about him good or bad that's the question kyle he's a starting wide receiver in three wide receiver sets that's basically been it you can't, he has no information okay, just say no i haven't heard anything. here we go a from august 5th Cousins was 9 of 10, finding wide receiver Darnell Mooney four different times as most active receiver of the day. There you go. Okay, so active. Yeah, look. <laughs> it's something. Uh, the latest on Brandon Ayuk. Steelers are back in, according to Adam Schefter. Dude. The uh, Patriots are moving on. Yeah, they are. That's the last report. <laughs> but then we had uh, Ricky Pearsall aggravated shoulder injury i mean the the 49ers went down hard yesterday yes but they, brandon Ayuk, i mean it just seems like he's going to be traded it's, and it, the the situation is more than my heart can handle at this moment yeah you've got to be just spinning uh, like it, a top it's it's absolutely insane as anyone like if you're a sam fran cisco fan like you're you're knee deep in this if you got him if you have any investment in brandon Ayuk, you are all about this and it's the reports were initially well the Patriots have decided to step away. Then you were getting more and more beat reporters saying, uh, well actually the Patriots offered him the bag. They were like more the, than thirty million. The report was yes, a thirty. I mean, and this is like that is elite top tier money. And according to them, Brandon Ayuk said, no, I don't want to go to the Patriots. And then the Patriots said, well, we didn't want you in the first place. So it's. It's not just money that Brandon Ayuk wants because if he it was just money he would have gone to the Patriots. So it's he's trying to find a balance of give me that money, but I also want stats and a chance to win. 
So, so wants, where's he going to go? The I don't know. Perfect situation. Um, we'll keep an eye on it, and I know the deucers over there are paying attention to the news all morning long. So we'll jump back into the wide receiver countdown. Wide receivers. All right, yesterday we uh, we went 20 to 11 on our consensus wide receiver rankings countdown. And so today we've got the top 10. Number 10. Puka Nakua sitting at 10 right now. He's 7 on Jason's uh, list, 12 for me, 14 for Mike. Yeah, I've moved him down. Broke the Jamar Chase. Is this Chase. because of the knee? It, it, it's just a little part of that. It, it It's partly the knee. It's partly the getting more reports of from from boots on the ground saying that the offense goes through Cooper Cup again okay. and it's no Puka's great I mean 14 is still extremely high I'm just he, I'm lower on him than the the ADP is so uh you know if competition's on the field in in the form of Cooper Cup and we saw uh you know we saw Robinson uh step up last year um DeMarcus not DeMarcus, Allen not Allen no <laughs> Allen doesn't step up steps down so you know, sitting at ten, finished as the wide receiver four. That seems like a, it seems like an okay place to be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I I don't think that Jason's sitting here with no doubt in his mind. Oh no, I'm I think not. I think at one point in time maybe there was no doubt. I think maybe now there's, you know, there's just room to go down for Puka Nakua and still be amazing. Yeah, I mean. For the team, obviously, last year he benefited from a lot of missing uh, Cooper Cup. When Cooper Cup was out there, he was still very, very good. But the you know a lot of his dominant games, you remember the beginning of the season when he was the wide receiver nine, five, four, eleven, like unbelievable start out of nowhere, just became a revelation. Um, you know that was when Cooper Cup was missing some time. So uh, you know it, it is hard. Now he is also a second year wide receiver. Good, you know, where it's like you usually take a step up. You get more uh, integrated into the offense. Obviously, you can't really get more integrated than he was uh, considering, you know, he had – he broke pretty much every rookie wide receiver record. 105 for 1486 and 6. 105. Yeah. 1,400 yards. I mean, that is yeah. – it's just unbelievable. So, I don't want to take away the fact that he was so great and, and maybe he doesn't repeat – being that great, but I don't want to take away what he did from who he is because yes, that yes. is the wide receiver that is so unbelievably talented with a great offense, a great offensive mind, and yeah, okay, he benefited from Cooper Cup going down, and I I don't want to you know you know assume this, but Cooper Cup has not been the healthiest player and is a little bit older now, so I I still I still don't mind betting on the. I think the value is more on Cooper Cup's side, obviously. I think they both um, could finish as the number one wide receiver for this team if both play 17 games. I still give my edge to Puka, so the value is with Cup. But I don't mind taking Puka first, betting on the younger, uh, you know, the younger prospect here. Yeah, it's like almost a <clears> – <throat> not exactly apples to apples, but the Amon Ra St. Brown situation of the breakout as a rookie – and then it was, we spent the off season of, well, is he that good? Or was it because everyone on the Detroit Lions got hurt and turned out he, it, was, that it, good. he was just that good? Number nine. All right, from Puka to Debo. Debo Samuel comes in at nine. We know a lot about Debo at this point in time, and we know how great he can be when... <laughs> We know that, too. We know that, too. He was the wide receiver 12 last year with uh, two missing games. Had the disappointing 2022 where he missed uh, four games and finished at 37, but then was the wide receiver two the year before. Brandon Ayuk hanging in the balance, right? This uh, uh, wide receiver on the other side of the field. I mean, it definitely seems like he's not going to be on the no, 49ers it doesn't. field. It doesn't seem that way. Uh, obviously, the, the ADP is going to change drastically once that happens but if you are drafting now well, even, well where even do you a, think Debo's going right now do you know off the top of your head because I have it right here uh, I think he's going in the third round yeah middle of the third wide receiver 16 we all have him ranked higher than that yeah, already and, and if 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 Ayuk leaves and I did I did bump up a little bit of Debo's numbers preemptively assuming 
um, an Ayuk departure. But if it becomes official, I will bump him up even further. I would be so confident to take Debo at you know wide receiver seven uh, ahead of Puka. You know who we just talked about. Like Debo is, you know, he's been the wide receiver two before. He's on a great offense. If he has the consolidation of more targets and more involvement uh, on a per touch basis, he's just he's a man. He, yeah, you get the rushing, you get the rushing yardage in there. You have to get that. Like you have to get those rushing touchdowns, which I mean, he has, you know, in basically every single year of his career. What's wild for Debo cuz look, I'm, I'm stuck in San Francisco mode of Brandon Ayuk, Debo, and it's a it was more just a of a shock, I guess. It's one of those things you know, but when you really think about it, Debo's been good for fantasy a season long. Just two times, like two out of five years, like when he's on the field, you know, and you have him two years, you you get good games here and there. But it was just like a wow, he's he's only been healthy, he's only been fantastic and healthy two years. Brandon Ayuk has had more total yardage in three of four years than Debo Samuel. He's had receiving Ayuk, yardage, he, no total yardage, hmm. total yardage. He's had more touchdowns. And because and, and health is a factor, too. I'm not saying it's on a per-game basis. Oh, okay, okay. And then two of the four years, Ayuk has had more total touchdowns than him. So it's just it, – I have him very high as well, but it, that was a interesting thing for me only, to really look at. He's only played two games without Ayuk in the last uh, several years. Yeah, Ayuk – both of those, he was I, top ten in those in those weeks. Yes. But, if Ayuk is gone, Debo is going to be incredible. Um, five rushing touchdowns last year. He's had – He's, 16 rushing touchdowns in the last three seasons. Well, and now you got everybody, all the running backs are hurt again. Yeah. So Debo's been the uh, yak leader uh, 2019, 23, 22, 21, 20. Um, I don't know why I said it in that order. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, that, was, uh, that, was the, that was the order of the yards after catch per reception. So, congratulations. All right, moving on. Number eight. All right, Devontae Adams comes in at eight. <laughs> yeah, it, this is <laughs> this is just, um, I mean, last year was an uncomfortable wide receiver 11. Amazing in championship week. The targets were outrageous. I'm kind of, I, I'll be honest, I'm just kind of tired of talking about Devontae Adams. Yeah, there I is definitely we're, fatigue. We're all just like we're as annoyed as he was being on that team last year. But you know, we don't have a winner at quarterback, so we don't even know if it's Minshew or Aiden O'Connell there, because there can't be. There's no winners. Yeah, There's no, losers. no one can establish that job. Someone will de facto receive it at the end, and then will be replaced halfway through the year. He ended up the wide receiver eleven with sixty three percent of his targets as catchable. And you can go back and watch the tape. You can go watch Jimmy Garoppolo miss him wide open on bomb touchdowns. Like the big playability of Devontae Adams is going to be there. But um but yeah, I mean this is this is not the sexiest pick you've ever made. Uh, I have him the highest. Like I think he ends up accumulating yeah. his way to wide receiver, uh, top 10 wide receiver numbers. We, I do we, not. I I've got yeah. him as the wide receiver 12. I think his talent is incredible. Last year, you know, he finished as the wide receiver 11. He was a consistency score of C. Half of his games were were brutal and and not games like what you're used to seeing where a bad game is like, well, he, he got 10 points. You know, he had games of 1.6 points, 0 0.9 points, just like crushing awful games. And part of the reason for that is the quarterback play, which hasn't changed. Uh, uh, you've still got It has changed, though. You think it's not poor quarterback play this year? Because that's what I'm referring to. Poor quarterback play last year, poor quarterback play yeah, this year. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm holding out. I, I mean, we we loved I, – I brought this up before. We loved Michael Pittman last year with Gardner Minshew for the entire season. And Aiden O'Connell managed to hyper-target Devontae Adams to the tune of good numbers at the end of the year. I think Jimmy Garoppolo hurt him really bad last year. I think the head coaching change hurt him bad la back last year or hurt him bad last year. I'm just leaving the door a little bit more ajar because they did – I mean, he got onto a 190 target pace over the back half of the year, and that's good enough. I mean, that's good enough to be 
Like, can Devontae Adams finish, Mike, in the top five? Mm. I think he still can. If it has to be Gardner. Like, I, I do not think that if it's Aiden O'Connell for the entire season that he can finish in the top five. I just I don't see O'Connell, even in a, another year, elevating to that level where we need him to get. Uh, he was 13 fantasy points per game with Aiden O'Connell last year. Targeted the, 30% of the time target per route run. Yeah, 30% it's, target per route run. But, that, I mean, that includes games of – what, hold on, I'm just double checking the. So Aiden O'Connell was really week nine on, and it's like week nine was five point four points, and you have some good games, then nine eight huge games, but also the, like the the chance that in the semifinals he puts up one reception for four yards, like it's and also it's also the ADP. Of, that was the Sneed Kansas City game, by the way. Yeah, the the one. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we guys disappear. I mean, they the wide receivers disappear. I I guess I am a just an apologist. flaming apologist for Devontae which, Adams. Which look, that's I watched fine. him last year, and I just felt bad for him. It's it's about this is this is a market value. This is an ADP thing because I talked about Jalen Waddle yesterday. Of he'll be inconsistent, but I want a player who can win me weeks. I don't know that I want to spend my second round yeah. pick yeah. on a player that will win me weeks. But then we'll have times where he just absolutely vanishes. And it's, he is, you know, it's like, do you want the upside of Devontae Adams or do you want the upside of Chris Olave or Devon Achan? Because that's the price you're, yeah, that's you, what you're choosing. Yes. The, 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 maybe that, that choice could be taken away from you in the second, but that's, Right now, ADP wise, what you're looking at. Yeah, Devontae Adams is still a great wide receiver. Yes, he, he didn't. Is. He didn't look like he lost anything last year. He's 31 years old, which for your normal receiver is is where that age cliff comes. For some of these greats, you know, Larry Fitzgerald, no problem. Um, but, Adams is an outlier to me. I'm not, I, I'm not worried about his age. But at the same time, you have a long history of great wide receivers. Just it's over eventually. You know, Julio Jones was great until one year it wasn't. You know, I think it was but his are, age are you going on season. record saying this is this is it for Adams? I am absolutely not. But what I'm saying is that there is that risk of yes. a downside. Yeah. That yeah. when you draft a 32-year – he'll turn 32 this season. When you draft a player at that age on a bad offense, there is the chance that you are the one holding the bag when the, the – you know, the, the bill is due and everyone else has left. And so it's, it's yours to pay – that's just a risk I don't want for an upside yeah. that I don't no, think is there and a consistency that is hard to swallow. And you add in Brock Bowers. He was. Someone you really, really love. I do. To take yeah. a few more targets. I mean, he needs these like 180 targets to be like. That's part of why I like him is because I don't think he can be worse than last year on offense. And he still pieced it together. Um, under Aiden O'Connell, I was just curious. I pulled up our weekly consistency uh and subdivided the year. Uh huh. He was the twelfth most consistent wide receiver under Aiden O'Connell. Okay. Yeah. So on a on a you said he scored thirteen points per game with mm -hmm. uh, O'Connell last year. Yeah. For reference, that would have been last year's wide receiver fifteen. Which you're paying which too is high. Fine, this is but too yes, much it's for too, it's the too price much is. for that. All right. Yep. There's a. Th this is why I don't like talking about Devonte Adams. <laughs> there's just too many. There's too many angles to take. So, uh, but the, I think it, you end with a draft price that is extremely high. Yes, and that and there's some more exciting names that maybe you know, it feels like you settle for Adams a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you talk about who could finish as the wide receiver one between uh, that guy or the guy we're going to talk about next, we know the answer. Yeah, number seven, Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson is 24 years old, comes in at seven. I've got him the lowest right now. Mike's the highest. We're all waiting. We're all waiting to see what can happen here. What does Aaron Rodgers have left? Um, the Jets are just a trepidatious situation to have optimism in, <laughs> to put too many words together there. But most ever targets through two years at the wide receiver position, he always seemed like he was open. You don't – you talk about guys you felt for on the field. I mean, Adams and Garrett Wilson belong in a tandem here. Wow. I mean, you want to talk about how bad the Jets' offense was that he was trying to go through. I'm reading this stat for the first time. He has had 310 career targets. He's had six targets that have incurred, occurred inside the five-yard line. I mean, during the time he's been playing, players with more targets inside the five-yard line 
Tommy Trimble, Logan Thomas, the ghost of Allen Robinson has had more. That is how bad. I was looking at, um, I, I forget who tweeted out, but there was a chart of the average uh, depth from the opponent's end zone where uh, the running back got the ball. And it was like, you know, somewhere around five, six, seven. Most of the league was all the same. And then there was the Jets at 25 yards away from the opponent's end zone. Their offense was unbelievably bad. You hope that you've got the new Devontae Adams situation for Aaron Rodgers, which was he, he was great, efficient, throwing touchdowns in the red zone, go to your number one receiver. That's the hope and expectation for Garrett Wilson. But just like you said, age 32, Devontae Adams carries inherent risk. So does this stage of Aaron Rodgers. Yes, absolutely. But there you go. Adams or um, Adams. Uh, Garrett Wilson sitting at seven in our rankings. His price, it's expensive. He's a wide receiver eight off the board. We're back to ex at the expectations of, you know, can, can Garrett Wilson finish top five? Yes. I think uh, so. That, that's the, the, the real argument here was because the price is it's difficult to get behind because of the amount of risk, but top five is in the range of outcomes. If Aaron Rodgers is 85, 90% of his MVP years, <clears throat> overall number one is in range of outcomes to me. I think Garrett Wilson's that good. Yeah, Since 2000, 97 wideouts have had 160 targets in a season, which is what he had last year. Out of that group, he was 96th in fantasy points, 97th in first downs, and 94th in yards per game out of – Leave like, Garrett alone. Out of 97. That was almost the historically worst season in history with 160 targets. Yeah. Now, should we should we be giving more blame upon him? Uh, I know the quarterback play was horrible, and the offense as a, as a whole was horrible. The offensive line was terrible. I think Zach he pressed Wilson's a little bit. I do. I think over the back half of the year he pressed a little bit. Um, but not much blame. No, like, like a small, tiny cup of blame. Yeah, you 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 watch him and he moves in a special way. He moves like Justin Jefferson moves, um, as as far as just like his body control and ability to set people up. It, He's got legs and he knows how to move. I mean, them. I have I have a really hard time at this ADP simply because. I don't personally believe Aaron Rodgers is the MVP Aaron Rodgers we saw a couple years ago at this age coming off of Achilles. So I don't get a lot of Garrett Wilson, but it is clear and obvious with his talent that if Aaron Rodgers can move this offense and is just – I mean, even like a the, the quarterback 15 in the NFL, like the 15th best quarterback, if he's a top half quarterback, Garrett Wilson should dominate. Um only wide receiver in the last decade to remain a first-round player ADP-wise a year after finishing outside the top 30. So this is 100% being That's banked. That's right. Well, good work, it's community. all being banked on on the Aaron Rodgers. We blame you, Zach. To fix it all. <laughs> Eat all right. it, Zach. All right, quick break. Back with uh, the top six. All right, we are back into the wide receiver countdown. Number six. A.J. Brown. Oh, yeah. I mean, A.J. Brown is drafted as the wide receiver six right now in ADP. It's too low. Um, my, Jason has him at four, <laughs> Mike at six, I'm at five, so we got him at six as a group. He, he's pretty uh, impenetrable. I think that's a good word for A.J. Brown right right here. Great offense, quarterback, pedigree, history, um, impenetrable. I don't, I don't think he can let you down, and there's very few players like that. In fact – I think it's a little unfair that he's not generally in the grouping of wide receivers at the very top of the draft. Okay, so Tyreek, CD, Jamar. Like the I, fact I, Jefferson's um, in that conversation and A.J. Brown I, is not there is not fair. I didn't say Jefferson. No, but he's talking just ADP. Like, okay. like it, we, Jefferson it's, went before Bijan in your mock draft, so I'm counting Jefferson in that group. Where is, So Jefferson, is the ADP on Jefferson higher? I believe it is. I the mean, ADP uh, on Jefferson is the wide receiver three off the board. Okay. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I believe like that AJ Brown should be right there. I agree. Well, we we talked about it on the the ready to roll segment earlier this week, but the utilization as a first read target inside the red zone, where fantasy value is so high, it, it was a dominant lead for AJ Brown within this team. Now, obviously, Kellen Moore's coming over, new coordinator, so that you could see that shift. But what won't change? is his physical 
ability to dominate NFL defenders. Um, he was paid more. He's the, he's the one for this team. He's 27 years old going in to a season where you should be near peaking in your total fantasy production. 1,456 yards last year. Yeah. yeah it, down, that, that, down year for the offense. The crazy run at the beginning of the year. What was the, broke the record for most, like, 125 yeah. yard games, I believe it Absolutely was. Absolutely dominant. And the the Kellen Moore discussion of is he good for the NFL? That is something I just I, I don't care. I care about <laughs> fantasy football and Kellen Moore for fantasy football for his alphas has been sensational. Second half was rough. It's fair to say that. Yeah. The offense was rough and they made their changes, but he's a physical force. Number five. Jefferson comes in at five, so we got him back-to-back -back in our consensus rankings. I actually have him a spot behind A.J. Brown. As do I. Um, but the you, we know yeah, that he's – This a, one's tough, man. We, yeah, know, yeah. we know how good of a player he is. I mean, like th this isn't Devontae, 98 yards a game for his whole career. This is not Devontae Adams with Gardner or AOC. This is the best wide receiver in football with – Sam Darnold, and so it, it for a bit. Take, I'm saying, yeah, and then and then probably JJ McCarthy, but I'm saying it's a 32 year old elite player or a 25 year old the best wide receiver yes. in football. Yes. So that that's where it's it is so difficult to gauge where Jefferson can succeed. Uh, the where can he succeed to with the quarterbacks that he has? He makes it very easy on the quarterback. He had top six games with Nick Mullins two times, but he also had some duds with yeah. with the bad performances. And yep. the schedule the schedule sucks. So like when I'm staring down the AJ Brown and the Jefferson decision, and I want to get off to a hot start, I'm just worried about. I'm. I know I, I I've seen so much eternal optimism around Sam Darnold, and I don't understand where it comes from. Well, this. Maybe maybe this time it could work for That's us. That's how it yeah. feels because is that I mean, we've got what? Jets, Panthers, uh 49ers so far. Mm -hmm. And you know, team four is normally where it hits, right? When you got it when you gotta go into New York. He's, he's on the Geno Smith path. Right. No, that and you know, it's definitely gonna work against very it, normal. In in New York against the Giants, then against the 49ers, Texans, Packers, and Jets, and then there's a bye week, which is you might as well say bye bye. Sam Darnold because the sacrificial baby will be uh, uh, thrown out with the bathwater. Yeah, yeah. He, we just need Sam to understand. Throw the ball at Jefferson. Yeah, I don't. Two defenders doesn't matter. Kyle, just chuck it up there, man. There was a Hopkins year where he was ruthlessly targeted by bad quarterbacks. Are you, is this the bad Hopkins year? No, this is a good Hopkins okay. year. I think Hopkins had a pretty good year, and uh, just saying there was like where Hopkins was his as a sophomore. DeAndre Hopkins wide receiver fourteen four, down to wide receiver thirty in a full season under ten points a game. Like okay, it, it, so I might have been looking for the opposite of what we found. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you you saw it with Larry Fitzgerald as well, who was a great. When you have a bad quarterback, it can affect you more than you think. Now. Andy, you brought this up, but it bears repeating again. He ha he scored 30 fantasy points in a game with Nick Mullins. He scored 23 fantasy points. He can do it, but I don't think he can do it consistently. Like when he had Kirk Cousins before the injury, he played a month with him. He was never not a wide receiver one. He was a wide receiver eight, 12, five, five. Uh, you're not getting that consistency out of him, and I think that there's a little bit of name – you know, golden name. He's Justin freaking Jefferson. He's the guy who, you know, was in debate for the number one pick in drafts last year that is just making you go, like you said, Mike, I mean, he. you can make the argument he is the best wide receiver in the NFL. I mean, that's that's it's an easy argument to make. Um, yeah, Hopkins was the wide, wide receiver four. Then he got Brock Osweiler and Tom Savage, and he became the wide receiver 30. Yes. And then the following four years, which I believe was those were, those were the Watson, Watson years. But one, two, five, five. So it can happen, and we need to be realistic the, and, and remove the golden name. The two years before the Brock Osweiler was, the leading passer would have been Fitzpatrick and, in 2015, Hoyer. It, yeah, yeah. I so mean, I'm it, just saying, like... He's you, still at five, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, he's... He, this is why... 
I think AJ Brown. I mean, really, it's just, it's AJ Brown and Justin Jefferson. I couldn't imagine personally taking Justin Jefferson ahead of AJ Brown this year with the quarterback situations of both those guys. It, the, the wide receiver can't. But what be, feels sexier on your team to look at before the games are played? Maybe Justin Jefferson. Yeah, but I, that's, I, I mean, that's what yeah. makes it hard for people. Number four, Jamar Chase comes in at four. We know Jamar Chase is a fantasy difference maker. This is not about the resume when you get to this point. This is just the order we uh, we concluded. 20%, uh, I'm sorry, he's had 20-plus fantasy points in 33% of his career games. That's 45 career games. 20-plus um, fantasy points a wide receiver is going to win you your week more often than not, and that is a third of the time for Jamar Chase. That is what you're buying. The only people over the last three years with a higher percentage of those type of games – are Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson, and Cooper Cup. I mean, he is a he is a weak winner, and he is a league winner. He is an absolute league winner, so long as him and Burrow stay healthy together for the season. Yeah, can we get that, please? Yeah, I mean, we just haven't seen it. Can we have hungry for more health? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can we? I mean, just I, his rookie year, I get he was just the, do it. Rookie year, he was the wide receiver five, but then it's just we haven't got a complete in totality fulfillment of the promise of Jamar Chase. I mean, his sophomore year, he was a wide receiver one. The last one, he was the wide receiver yeah, 12. But was, in 12, 12 games, games, yeah, he was unbelievable. 16.6 .6 points a game. His targets have still gone up three consecutive years. Yeah, you, he used to be one of those guys where it's like, you think you're going to get 70 receptions for yeah. a, just a, a ton of efficiency, and he's become more of like the – the every down, the the high target, high volume, alpha wide receiver. It's just to me, I, if Joe Burrow is healthy and Jamar Chase is healthy, there is no question you want Jamar Chase on your team and you don't want him on your opponent's team every single week. No question. And so it's just a matter of health to Stay me. Stay healthy, buddy. Number three. Amon Ross St. Brown comes in at three. What is there left to prove? <laughs> I think – I might be along with people that are still a bit skeptical that he will continue scoring touchdowns at the rate he does, considering the type of player he is, uh, you know, his his size, his utilization in the slot, those things that don't usually. He went know, up from six to ten last year. Right, ten, ten's probably too much, and that's where it's like if he if he's a ten touchdown guy, you know, on the reg then he deserves 100% to be the, the wide receiver three here, without without question, uh, because his consistency every game, I mean, he is he is their passing offense, and they have He's, a good passing and offense. And they've, they've – I mean, you could make the argument that their wide receiver room has gotten worse. Would you their rather – Their yeah, number yeah. two receiver is gone. Right yes. now, Yes, Josh Reynolds is gone, and that was their number two so, no, number two guy. Here's a great question. Would you rather have – Amon Ross St. Brown's consistency or Jamar Chase's explosiveness like that's a, that's a game theory uh you know it, it like, which can you get less of later in the draft that's uh, how I'm viewing that and I, I feel like I can I that's what I I kind of fit into you can I, th I think you can probably find more explosiveness it, like the very infrequent like there's going to be guys who can who will give you four spike weeks through for a season? Yeah, but you can't you can't play them or know when to play them. That might no, happen I, in best ball. Yeah, I, I can agree that you don't know. I'm just saying the 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 consistency of Amon Ra is I don't think you find that nearly anywhere else. It might be different in you know obviously a full PPR versus sure you know we had a uh, things Standard. to remember episode i believe it was a couple of years ago it wasn't wasn't this last year it was after we did the truth series and digging deep into the numbers and seeing the research on what helps you win championships my thing to remember was that most all wide receivers are inconsistent and the ones that you win championships with are the highest ceiling players the ones that can put up the monstrous crazy points and not that Amon Ra can't have a good weekly output and score two touchdowns in a game. He can. But I, I, I you know, I'm seeing this on my rankings that I've got Amon Ra ahead of Jamar Chase, and I'm I'm questioning if I'm on the clock, who would I really rather have? And I I, I think it's Chase. Okay. Number two. 
It's a pretty decent year for this guy. C.D. Lamb of the Dallas Cowboys, who is now put on the NFI list, right? Um, yeah. Is that, is that the name of the right list? It, or, or no, no, it's, it's the not, uh, It was a not report. Something. Whatever the one is where he's not doing anything right now because he wants money. Give the which man been, his money. Which has been super. Like, how are you doing with these dynasty guys? You've got them all paid? I, I can't do anything. No, you haven't accomplished a darn no, thing. No, no. C.D. Lamb, how's that deal? It's, uh, it's not there. Chase got money? Well, Chase is a little different. He, you're you're going to get fired. If I were, you're going to get fired. Honestly, it, Chase, go go practice. <laughs> Come yeah. on, yeah. Come you, on, buddy. You, you got enough contract left. Yeah, exactly. Get out there. Hey, but you know what he's not doing? You know what none of your guys are doing? What's that? Getting injured. Hey, yeah, yeah. Who's doing great things right okay. now? Okay, okay. Who's doing great yeah, things right CMC now? I got CMC some extra money, and look at that. Yeah, but you know who's going to get injured at the start of the season? These guys who haven't been practicing. Oh, the fat Thors of the world. Yeah. Um, CD Lamps coming in at number two. Jason's got him at one. Mike and I at number two. Do I really? <laughs> well, no. I mean, I, you know, the stats bear out, but like I view Tyreek. control of your life. <laughs> I, 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 I still view Tyreek as the player I would take. I feel like you've been talking about Tyreek over CD. I, they're in the, they're in the like the. They're so close to each other. I don't. I, you know, I, I would, I would put CD Lamb in that Tyreek and. Um, CMC category of those those are the first three picks in every draft, right? Like, is there any draft so. th that you've seen that those aren't the first three? No. Uh, 23.9 fantasy points per game for him after the bye. The next closest <laughs> was 17 by Tyreek and Amon Ra. <laughs> so it was outrageous. And that, then, that's an unsustainable heater, though. That obviously means number one. Tyreek Hill is sitting there, 30 years old. He's got some more extra guaranteed money. 30 years young, I think he – what did he tweet out? He was 6% body fat at he's, 30? He's uh, just – he's unbelievable. It's it's really – I'm 60% body thing. fat. He is the most <laughs> – <laughs> I'm not 60% body fat. For those not on YouTube going, whoa, I know he jokes about being overweight, but this guy's – Imagine, like, if you never watch on YouTube, you never see you before, and you say that. What – mental transformation happened in their mind oh man on what how they thought you I were be, i became a south park character you know yeah it's like, you did <laughs> I'm, I'm you, just am, a... <laughs> you exploded yeah um no you're you got to be like 50 52 yeah i'm under 60 now <laughs> yeah 60 percent under 60 percent uh tyreek is tyreek's unstoppable he's unguardable uh the offense runs through him he's everything you want consistency wise 1800 receiving yards i mean um you can't even stop him from having kids i mean no nope. you, <laughs> nope. you can't stop him from nope. doing anything yeah i mean i i, I love me some cd lamb obviously the numbers are bearing out that he has a finish ahead of of tyreek but Ty tyreek physically is truly unstoppable i don't think you can scheme for him i don't think there's a thing a defense can do you can't double cover him he has an elite trait that is unreplicatable. Um, his good, good word. His ability to just burst out of a cannon in any direction at any point in time. There's just nothing you can do to really stop Tyreek, and so yeah, safe, very safe. Yeah, I, and that's I, why you said you. I feel like he is safer, despite the age. He's safer than CD Lamb to me, and apparently uh, CMC to you right now. Yeah, right now with with a calf problem for CMC. Okay, all right, we did it. We counted them down. And you can see all of the rankings and the projections associated with the rankings at the Ultimate Draft Kit or in the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. What do we got coming up? Anybody? Uh, running back rankings all on right. Thursday, 20 all right. through 11. And we got our tips and tricks episode yeah. next week. Ooh. And next week. The My Guys. The My Guys are happening. Yep. Yep. I'm going to where, I'm, where? I'm knock one out of the park again. I got another Mike Evans on the way. I got two. I mean, locked. not Mike Evans. It's another. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's this year's Mike Evans. Mike. So Evans. you have two locks. I've got two locks. I got I, two and a half locked. Two. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a lock, Andy. I got two locks. I'm I'm locked at two. Okay. As well. All right. All right. And then and we can trade. I I think I am going to mention for the first time a couple of finalists before I I reveal the my guys this year. Okay. I like that. I think a couple because there's get, get a little credit. <laughs> <laughs> A little credit, none of the blame, baby. Yeah, there you go. All right, that'll do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you for joining us. It's going to be a fun couple of weeks, and uh, football time is here. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. We love you, Foot Clan. See you later. Goodbye.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.